The Southern Vermont Economic Summit resumed as an in-person gathering on Thursday, May 12th, at the Grand Summit Lodge at Mount Snow in Dover. It was held as a remote online event last year, and not at all in 2020, when it was canceled due to the arrival of the COVID emergency. The conferences, which bring together business, nonprofit organizations, local town officials, and others from Bennington and Wyndham counties, started in 2017. The theme of this year's conference was Cultivate Change, and the opening keynote address was given by Joe Wea, the director of the Ethiopian Community Development Council, or ECDC, and Thomas Huddleston, a leading international expert on migration, integration, and diversity, who is working with ECDC to build up the Multicultural Community Center in Brattleboro. They spoke about their work bringing Afghan and other refugees to Vermont and the contribution this is making to the state. This is a huge challenge, and it's fantastic that rural Vermont has seen the opportunities for its economy and for its communities. That is why we as ECDC were so thrilled to come here. ECDC is the only of the nine federal resettlement agencies that is community-based. We are Southern Vermont's multicultural community center. We want to be working, as Joe said, directly with the community because we believe that in a rural area, your chances as a newcomer depend on how many people you know and the opportunities that they tell you about and the groups they welcome you to and the employers they introduce you to. People move forward in their lives here because uh, they are person to person. Housing availability and diversity were other themes frequently discussed in several of the breakout panel discussions held over the course of the day. To really um, think about what does it mean to create welcoming communities um, and welcoming workspaces. And this is a really complex practice, right? Like this is really complex what we're talking about when we think about what does it mean to be either welcoming people, as we've been hearing a lot about today, who are resettling into the United States, but also for the folks who've already been living here. Because we know that we have a lot of people who are experiencing marginalization in a lot of different ways across um, the landscape of New England who have been here for hundreds of years and, uh, and whose ancestors and family members are still here. Daniel Herridges, a senior editor and founding member of Strong Towns, a nonprofit media advocacy organization, led two of them, focusing on housing shortages and how towns can rethink their planning and zoning regulations to create more housing stock. Early on in my talk, I emphasized the range of actors that benefit from the status quo, where housing costs go up and up and up, versus those who don't benefit from it, because the scales really are tilted. Um, and they're tilted because fundamentally we've sort of decided on a deep societal level that housing is supposed to be an engine of wealth building, it's supposed to be an investment vehicle, it's an asset class for the real estate industry. And what we're seeing now is the untenability of that. Um, we're at a crisis point where huge numbers of people cannot secure safe, decent, stable, affordable housing because um, <clears throat> it's just out of their reach. And something has to give. And so the question is, when something gives, what options are on the table? I'm optimistic about that because I think that people are resourceful. I think that, you know, Americans are entrepreneurial and improvisational, and I think that there's a growing awareness at the policy level about the need to allow that to happen. And that's taking the form of things like this growing interest in missing middle housing, which, you know, thousands of city councils are talking about missing middle housing across the U.S., and 10 years ago it was almost zero. Um, many, many city councils are talking about removing their parking requirements. 10 years ago that was almost zero. Um, the YIMBY movement, Yes in My Backyard, um, is a very new development. And all these things are snowballing out of an awareness of the crisis that we're in. And what they do is they create space. They don't necessarily solve the problem overnight. They create space for the people who are gonna solve the problem because they have to. Others centered on how to create more welcoming workplaces, updated rules on ARPA funding, and preparing a business for changes and opportunities. One of the highlights of the conference has always been the introduction of this year's group of emerging young leaders. One of them was Martha Cornwell, recently elected to the Shaftesbury Select Board, and we had a chance to talk with her about that before their presentation. It's quite an honor. <laughs> yes, I was really surprised I had someone nominate me, and uh, 
put in some resume information and it was amazing to be selected out of I think 57 candidates um, for being an emerging leader of 2022. Yes, I, I have never been to one of these conferences so I'm really glad that someone had sent me a link to it um, and the networking experiences have been wonderful and lots of good tidbits of um, organizations to look through for both my work in the Planning Commission but also on the select board um, as we try to figure out what to do with our ARPA funding. So it's been a great experience so far. The conference is meant to bring together communities in Wyndham and Bennington counties, not only for the speeches and panel discussions, but to informally discuss issues across the southern frontier to inspire more collaboration and ways to drive economic improvement. Adam Grinold, the executive director of the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, and Jim Sullivan, the executive director of the Bennington County Regional Commission, gave us their takeaways on how the southern part of Vermont is faring at this stage of the COVID pandemic amid other issues like population growth. Yeah, no, I think the, the main idea of the conference has always been to bring together people from across the two southernmost counties. Uh, you know, in 2015 when the legislature designated the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone, it was because we really, we have unique challenges. Uh, we're the furthest two counties uh, from the seat of, of governance. Uh, we have population and economic declines that were really outpacing other regions. Um, so we wanted to bring folks together. Uh, we wanted to have everybody point in the right direction, understand that we were going to assess the, the region's strengths, and from those strengths build a strategic plan to grow the economy. What really we need is more people. Uh, people, people, people. Um, if people will create additional challenge, but they will also, with those people, will come the resources to solve those challenges. So we're in the situation where we have to plan our way and execute our way out without enough people in which to do it. So we need more people on our volunteer boards. We need more coaches for our little league teams. We need more people for war employment, of course. We need more people, period. What was uh, some of the discussion like in your ARPA workshop there, or panel discussion, or what are, what are some of the new uh, rules, I guess, because it seems like there's uh, been an evolution in some of the guidance that's been handed out, not only from uh, the federal government, but uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Uh, are things yeah, loosening I, up somewhat? or? Oh, it's loosened up a great deal. It, it's really, a lot of it's based on the um, final uh, treasury guidance that basically allows um, most municipalities, and certainly all the municipalities in our region, to um, use the ARPA funds for any uh, governmental services that they would otherwise be providing. So there's not those kind of those narrow lanes that were uh, originally prescribed with the ARPA funding. It's still, you still have to, you know, document the use and everything. And I think that the, the, the points that were raised in the, the, the uh, session here at the, at the economic summit over and over again was that uh, towns and villages really should take advantage to, to you know, think about, um, you know, big picture and uh, projects that they would not otherwise be able to do but for uh, the availability of this once in a lifetime infusion of money. So think about things that could really, you know, um, transform, revitalize your community, uh, potentially uh, in collaboration with other with other communities um, or using um, the ARPA funds to leverage other funds that might be available. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.